right here. Yep. Well, sort of. we'll talk about human language support from group five, uh, five to six. Thank you. Um, so, welcome everyone. Uh, this might be a, a bit of uh, an interesting wording for the title, but we will probably get over why I am um, having this uh, specialized title here. Uh, but first I'd like to uh, introduce myself a bit. Uh, I'm working with open source uh, software uh, since 1999. Worked with the PHP people, have been uh, head of the PHP Net website team and uh, the documentation team for a few years. And we have been working with um, quite a few uh, multi-language issues there. The PHP documentation is a very huge, uh, several thousand uh, pages uh, document. And it's translated to multiple languages and we needed to somehow help people do that. Um, and I also uh, uh, work with Drupal since 2003, uh, around when I started to look for uh, CMS to migrate from uh, PostNuke install, which was horrible. It took months to migrate, migrate the data and stuff. Um, it's a single Hungarian site uh, where we needed it. But I, then I require some other language features for other projects. So that was a natural uh, evolvement from there. And uh, because it's a Hungarian site, I needed to translate the interface to Hungarian. And at that time, the Drupal interface translation was very cumbersome. Uh, you can only translate your own site in your own database. It was not possible to share. It was not possible to save and, and put it on your uh, any other site. So we needed to uh, do something about it. Uh, and through all my works, um, in part because Greece uh, Batard's uh, thought that Drupal 6 should be a multi language release. He made me a Drupal 6 core committer. So, just in case you have any bugs or problem with uh, Drupal 6, uh, just hook with me, uh, send me the patch number, the issue number, and we can talk it through and maybe get it in. Uh, I have been able to get some fixes into Drupal 6 uh, the previous day, so it was quite nicely going. Uh, as I said, I was uh, building the PHP documentation uh, uh, translation tools. Uh, I have been uh, translating books and themes in Hungary from English to Hungarian most of the time. Uh, and I wrote my MSc thesis about multi language software in open source content management systems, at least a few of them I, I've investigated deeply. Uh, and I've made plans for Drupal 6 based on that analysis but um, to tailor these talks for your needs, it might be better if I know uh, who is experienced with Drupal or whether I have, have guys who are new to Drupal who is experienced with it. Uh, most of you, okay, a few of you are not. Uh, who built a multi-language multi site? No, not okay. At least two languages, yep, at least two languages actively used on the site. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, I, I've I've been a bit uh, I had a bit of a uh, thinking in my thesis whether I call it a model language scenario or not. It's kind of a model language scenario in Drupal because how it is implemented, but otherwise it's not really. Uh, and who who done it with Drupal? Most of you, yeah. Who done it with something else? Nobody. One. Okay. What? Did a site without a content management system so far? Yeah, but there are maybe if you use some other content management system and they have some other solutions. Okay, so let's clear up some concepts first. Um, uh, what, what we uh, briefly touched here, but it, it, it's important to distinguish, uh, I think, is whether you are building a multi language site or an international site. Uh, because uh, a multi language site uh, in countries like Belgium or Canada can very easily be uh, just restricted to that country, so you have the same culture for different languages. Uh, but if you uh, are building an international site, it might be maybe you only have the English language, but you need to serve Australian, um, American, and uh, British uh, audience. Uh, there you have like shipping costs if you have an e commerce site and a lot of other issues which might come up. 
so these are two different stuff. Maybe you have uh, multiple languages and maybe you have multiple target uh, cultures or countries. Uh, you need to decide on that. What we can help with in Drupal is um, how you can uh, build the multi-language stuff. Uh, what you need to tailor differently for, for the different cultures is up to you. You need to research that. Um, like all the imagery you use on your site might, might need to be different if you, like uh, Europeans um, love to use check marks when they mean okay. When you go to Japan, they, they have a circle and that says okay. If you have a check mark there, it's not, it's not really uh, what they mean. So uh, there, are, there are quite a few uh, cultural differences in signs and in how, how you express uh, things. Uh, so it needs to be taken into account. Uh, and there are two other terms which uh, are better to clean up. Uh, one is internationalization, which is abbreviated IATN. Uh, and it is basically how you design a product to be able to handle these needs. Um, I've explained, so it's the design and development of a product application or document content that is enables easy localization. So the important words are uh, design and enables. So you have a design which enables that you do uh, the localization stuff. Uh, and there is localization, which is actually, um, which, which is the actual application of the internationalization to your own needs. Uh, there are some confusions in the Drupal world uh, about uh, this stuff because we have an I-18 and module, module and we have a localizer module and we have a uh, lo localization server and localization client now, and the Lockia moduling core. Um, so, so the wording is not, not uh, actually clear in Drupal land, but it's better to, to know where to look for information if you're interested. Uh, so what we are um, trying to do in Drupal is to internationalize the system and uh, to help you build multilingual sites. Uh, what you need to localize on your own site is uh, up to you and what you need to uh, do to serve an international audience is also up to you. So how Drupal approaches its problems. Um, uh, we have a by design category in our uh, backtracking system and, and uh, I will show some examples when, when these problems came up because people don't understand how Drupal is designed to handle these uh, problems. So in Drupal, uh, there is uh, there is the website source code, there's a PHP and template code you have on your web server, and it has translatable uh, strings in there. Um, our system works by uh, enabling anyone to translate that stuff uh, since like four years or something, so it's, it's quite a stable system. What's written in the source code is quite easy to translate. But what you enter, what uh, your own menu items, your content, your uh, aggregation categories, your taxonomy terms, your profile field titles, etc., 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 are all your own content. And the system, uh, and that the, local, uh, the localization system, which is built to translate text from the source code, is not ready for handling that. So. There are some famous problems uh, coming up because of this. Is when you install Drupal, it saves the story and page content types in Drupal 5, uh, and it's saved in the database. So it's not in the source code anymore. Uh, so when you have your site translated to different languages, although people say that it, it was in the source code because otherwise it, it wouldn't be able to uh, insert it into the database, but it's not translated anymore because the data is in the database, so we won't translate. If you'd like to have translated, you need to translate it yourself. A different problem with the built-in menu items, because uh, in Drupal 5, until you edit a built-in menu item, it's always uh, accessed from the source code. So it's always translated to the language you are viewing the page in. But if you edit a menu item, then it's your own menu item, even if you have not modified any of the text uh, the description or the title, it's, it's your own menu item. So it's coming from the database and it's not translated. So you can suddenly untranslate some of your menu items if you added the pass or, or put it uh, into another place. It's quite a, it's quite a problem. 
And the other famous problem is the firm's vocabulary title, which we also auto automatically install uh, in install time. It's saved uh, as a default vocabulary title and it's not translated anymore, uh, how, whatever language you run on your site. Um, I've, uh, I have these famous, famous um, issues out of the Drupal 5 and Drupal 6 comparison because the, these design uh, decisions are staying the same in Drupal 6. So, uh, so it's important to, to, to know the distinction between the source code stuff and what you enter into the database. But how does Drupal 5 um, approach these problems? Anyway, if you have questions um, throughout my session, feel free to hand, raise your hands. I'd have to speak, 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 and never notice that anyone would have a question. So if you have one, then feel free to ask. No, nope? okay. Um, so what's built into Drupal 5? Uh, we have a translatable installer. Uh, very few people know about it, but if you have the right named files at the right places in install time, which is documented somewhere, <laughs> but that, that's, what, that's what some people know. Um, then you have, you, have your, uh, you have your installer fully translated from the start. Uh, uh, you need uh, you need a contributed module to to go on with that to import all the translations. But the translatable installer is part of Drupal 5. Uh, it's not really well documented. Um, there's a basic uh, interface language that's set up, which means that you have a list of languages you can use on the site. And there's a runtime interface translation with per user preferences, which I've talked about. Is that when someone comes from a source code and it needs to be displayed. It goes through uh, queries to the database. Uh, and if a translation is found in the database, then it's replaced um, to the language the page is translated in and um, the, text the text is displayed in the language uh, you are requested the page in. User preference means that you, if you have multiple languages on your site, more than one, then the users are allowed to select their own language uh, to view the pages in. So that, um, that means that uh, a lot of caching stuff needs to work per language because the menus are translated uh, on uh, per language, the pages, the blocks. So uh, language needs to be taken into account when you are building a caching strategy on Drupal 5 and on Drupal 6 also. Um, so how does it work from the inside? No, 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 uh, not in Drupal 5. In Drupal 6 it does, okay. in, Drup uh, in Drupal 5 it does not. Okay. I'll explain how it works. Um, so I just, uh, how, how does the runtime system work? Uh, we have a get text based um, solution, which means that, that we, use, we use the well-known get text portable object and portable object template formats, which are simple text files with uh, string pairs, like this is the English version, this is the translated version. And all the source code you write for, for Drupal and you would like to contribute to the international community is required to have uh, English text in it. Uh, the next slide will show how, how, it's, actually, how it's actually translated. Uh, and we, we can import those get text files into the database. We store all the translations in all the interface translations in the database. And when it's required, we look up uh, stuff from the database and use that. So the get text uh, transportation means are, are just for interfacing. Um, we generate these text files for uh, the translation teams with our specialized translation tools because we have special, special functions using these texts in Drupal. Uh, so we generate template files which have empty translation strings in there and the CVS system is used to store and release these translations uh, for the different modules and for Drupal core itself. And when you have a Drupal module installed, this is an often mentioned problem with Drupal 5, is that you upload all your stuff to the server uh, via FTP or some other way. Uh, and then when you turn the module on, you still need to upload the translation files on the web interface yourself manually if you don't have any other uh, automated means. Uh, so how does it work in the source? We have the special T function and every string which includes in a T, this is the go to uh, page string, 
is extracted so it's available for translation. We have these special placeholders. So just in case we have something dynamic in the strings, it's not included in here. Uh, it's generated dynamically in the page view with some variable. That's important because we can uh, extract uh, translation templates which will be available for, for a longer time. If you have like uh, page one, page two, page three, page four, then it, it will be uh, an infinite number of, of, uh, of strings to translate, so it, it would not be possible to translate it. And we also have this format plural uh, stuff, uh, which is easily shown in English. Uh, if you have, if your account is only one, then it says one year. If it's more, then it says uh, the number of years. Uh, and it's, uh, it's important to know that different languages have different rules for these. Uh, like um, most of the, uh, how it's called in English, Slavish or the Polish, uh, uh, Czech, um, Russian languages have up to six or eight uh, plural rules and they are very complicated. Like if it's divided by 10 and it has a, has a result of four, then we have this one, that one. So they have very complicated rules for it. Uh, this takes care of that. So what, what our programmers need to remember is that when they have something which, which uh, where the wording depends on the number, then they need to use the format plural for that. So these are the two uh, most well-known special functions. And we have uh, quite a few other special cases, like when you have a permission hook in your code, then our extractor goes in and, and extracts the permission names from the array when their watchdog um, uh, logging um, calls, then the watchdog type names are extracted and so on and so on and so on. So there are a few special cases by the most well-known ITN format plural, which end up in the template so the translator can translate them. And um, basically they provide a translation of this string uh, to their language. Uh, there are some contributing modules to help um, in your translation. The uh, autolocker module helps in importing actually uh, the, the translations for your contributing modules when you enable them. So you don't need to separately upload them via web form and find all the, like if you are enabling a few e-commerce modules and you have two to three languages, then you might have to upload a dozen or, or more uh, files. It, it's not fun. Uh, it's automated with autolocker module. It's automatically, uh, uh, imports all the translation files for your contributing modules you are enabling. And the localized profile is basically just a shell to, to get this into a default profile and enable you to do this from the start of the installation. Uh, there are two competing module suits, uh, the I-18 and the internationalization module suit, and there's a localized module suit. The history is that uh, the ITN module suite was very actively developed uh, uh, two to three years ago. And then there was a time when it was not actually um, active. And uh, uh, an Italian guy, Roberto Garola, got completely fed up about it. It was not possible to submit patches and changes and stuff. So he, he copied code and started to write a different implementation. Uh, so there are basically two competing implementations for quite similar stuff. Uh, uh, they are they are most of the time converging to the same direction. When localizer comes up with some new idea, then you have a sub-module growing in the international internationalization module uh, too. So, so they are getting more and more similar. And with Drupal 6, they need to rethink uh, a lot of uh, things anyway. So uh, we'll see them, uh, maybe one of them will disappear. I'm not sure, but, but we will see them convert. convert. Uh, these are for all the user-generated stuff I mentioned like menu items, taxonomy terms, vocabularies, profile categories, profile of field titles, um, aggregated titles, a lot of stuff, uh, anything that you uh, provide on the web interface. Um, I have a lot of uh, stuff to talk about today, so I'm not going to deal with about these two modules. I would like to show you how Drupal 6 is making our life a lot easier. And there is an XLIF tools module which I've developed as part of my uh, MSc thesis, uh, which is about helping you to interface with professional translation tools. So Drupal and, and the internationalization localizer modules are fine if you have all your stuff on your own site. 
but a lot of use cases you need to hire professional translators who are working some at some company and they they will go into your system and translate your stuff there they have their own software they have professional tools that uh, have memory to remember how to translate common strings how to translate common sentences so when they receive a page of text um, part of it is automatically translated by the tool by filling in uh, the parts and they, they uh, only need to reread it and, and fix it up. So a lot of stuff in, in translation is automated. And it's not, far, not our task to deal with it. So uh, there are very cool software for that. We need to just be able to interface with them. Uh, and the XLIF tools module is built for that. XLIF is, um, is a standard for for interfacing between the translation tools and any other format. So if you use Microsoft Word or, or Excel or HTML or RTF or Dogbook XML or anything, there are conversion tools for XLIF. And XLIF is under, understood by most of the professional translation systems. Uh, or there are plugins to, some to understand it. So this is just a, just a transit format between the, your site and the translation tools. And XLIF tools basically allows you to export your note content in an XLIF format, which you can import to any XLIF tool and then uh, translate there. It outputs an XLIF and you can import the XLIF back in uh, Drupal. Uh, so the translation is there. Uh, it's also interfacing with the workflow module. So you can set when it's possible to export or import these translations. So if you build a complex, work, a complex publishing workflow, like it needs, to, it needs to have a draft state, it needs to be reviewed. When it's reviewed, uh, it needs to be accepted. When it's accepted, it goes out for translation. So then it enables the export functionality until that it's not possible to export. Then it can export a translation uh, and then it enables the uh, import functionality and it goes to, uh, to a different node as it's expected by localizer and internationalization module and it's usable on the site as translation of that content. So, so it's basically to support, uh, support a more professional workflow with an uh, external uh, translation tool. Uh, so there's, uh, there are the contributing modules for Drupal 5 and that was the built-in functionality for Drupal 5, uh, but we, we wanted more for Drupal 6. And we were looking at the other systems, whether they do better or not, or, uh, or they are um, uh, or, or just very crazy what they do. So part of my uh, MSCT is included digging right down to these systems and finding out what they do, why they do this. Um, um, I know uh, Joomla is not, or not ready with 1.5, so I reviewed 1.0. Um, they are still not ready with 1.5. The same translation yeah. solution. Wow. <laughs> they are crazy. Oh, so that's, har that's a horrible tool. Yeah, yeah. That's basically a horrible tool. Yeah. Hi, Joomla guys. Um, so, uh, uh, BMW. BMW. Yeah. Maybe they have slaves doing the translation <laughs> who, who, can ha who, can ha who can have all the education to do it. Yeah, so uh, uh, Joomla have a built in interface translation based on PHP constants. Which means you have PHP files and you need to um, you need to copy the PHP files and, and translate the text there, and you can have have uh, have your stuff uh, there. And it works interestingly that you need to upload a tarball and it extracts uh, the PHP files to your server, so it needs write access to all there, and it extracts the PHP files made by the translation teams. So if if they don't do well PHP, then you can have any PHP in your uh, server file system. Um, and it also has no support for Pluler stuff, actually. Uh, there's a Joomfish, uh, Joomfish named add-on uh, in which is possible to translate content. It works with uh, thin a simple configuration files. You say that I'd like to have uh, uh, in this database, in this table, in this column, in this row, so you address a cell and you say that I would, I'd, uh, I'd like to um, replace this text with a different text in a different language. So it works very low level on the database. You need to say the database name, the table name, the column name, 
the row ID, so you have a cell, and you know uh, that you, it can be replaced with some text. It's very flexible because you can translate anything, but it has a horrible interface. It has, yeah, it has a horrible interface. Like when you edit the content, you have a WYSIWYG editor, you have images you can drag there, and it's all fine. When you go to the translation interface, it's a serialized image array. You, you, don't, you can't upload images for the translation like you have a translated figure or a graph. And you, you need to know how the serialization syntax works because uh, the, the whole stuff breaks if you don't know. So it's not for humans. Um, <laughs> uh, there's typo 3. Uh, uh, I'd encourage you to, to watch the typo 3 screencast about translations if you are very bored. Uh, there are, there's a three hour tr um, stuff and, and there, there's a lot, uh, there are a lot of parts in it where it, it is uh, speeded up like <laughs> because it, it's doing the same, 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 same and, and again and again to translate stuff. Um, so uh, they have a special format for translations. It's a local long XML format uh, which was made up by typo guys. They, they made up script languages. They made, they made up everything for themselves. There's a special XML format used by them which you don't have any tools out, out of typo 3 uh, to handle it. Uh, but it works uh, nicely for them. It, uh, the interface translation works nicely. Uh, they have two different methods for multi-language content. They have a multi-language content method, which means that um, in typo 3 you basic basically build trees, uh, trees uh, you build websites as trees. Uh, so the multi-language content method only means that you have a tree for the English, a tree for the German, a tree for the French, Etc. Etc. The multi language content integration method means that when you have a content entered into the database, then you can have translatable fields under the content. So you have a subtree in the content, and you can have um, your fields translated into different languages. Um, and there's also a localization manager client, which was developed last uh, Christmas. Uh, and it has a Microsoft Excel XML format based output, which can be used by external translation tools. So uh, it's, it's, not as, it's not as universal as, as XDIF, but, but it's close. Uh, there was some company who said that they will provide an, an XDIF. So Typo 3, Microsoft Excel, XDIF, translation tool, XDIF, Microsoft Excel, Typo 3 uh, would work, but they are not ready with the tool set yet. So uh, it works with Microsoft uh, Excel. Now, um, I also looked at Plone, who have a very cool solution. They are uh, really, um, they have an internet, uh, inter uh, interface translation with get text stuff. So um, we are very close. And they have a, a lingua Plone uh, named uh, language um, system. It's called the product uh, in Plone. Uh, which allows you to have different content objects and then relate them. It's very similar to how IATN and uh, Localizer module does it. They were going through uh, different design steps to, to reach this point. A lot of people are complaining about internationalization and Localizer module doing this, that you have a different instance for your German, for your English, for your French uh, content. But uh, Plum guys also, um, uh, reach this conclusion because it makes much easier to handle them, uh, to to uh, to give them different permissions to assign them different workflows, like uh, so so your French team uh, is not allowed to edit edit the German content, or different translation teams have different uh, reviewers who have the rights to review the content, so they have a very solid uh, system. They have a very solid workflow system. Uh, they are lacking a lot of uh, in a lot of other areas where Drupal is cool, but the modern language stuff is is very strong, and they have an excellent for an expert support. So, so they were uh, one of the uh, poster chats for me to look at. Um, so after um, we looked at all these uh, systems and, and briefly to a few others, I tried to look at uh, heavyweight enterprise Java stuff, and I went to my my uh, friends at Sun to tell me what system's good, what should I know, what should I, what should I see, and they said that we, we don't really have this stuff. And I, I, I checked some, some, uh, some of the big enterprise systems and they said like, uh, we don't prohibit you translating stuff. 
like they have a tree based website building so you can do anything like you can have different trees we don't prohibit it I said okay well yeah that's kind of a feature um, so uh, we looked at what we can do with Drupal 6 we should have uh, I, I, I wish we could have been done a lot more but we've gone a long way already um, but there, there is a lot of stuff left for Drupal 7 I can assure you uh, we have a new language subsystem, which I will uh, uh, touch shortly. We have an easy interface translation importing functionality, which is a lot easier than Autolockia was. Um, we have performance optimizations for single language sites, like if you have a German site, which needs to be trans translated from English to German because Drupal is English, then it's much performant in Drupal 6 than it was in Drupal 5. Uh, when you have more languages, then, then it's even better. Um, we have content translation added in, and we have a tag scripts API, sort of an API uh, for, for translation extensions anyone uh, would like to develop. So one of the new stuff is languages. Um, where we have um, English and native names for all languages um, because it, it turned out that it's quite important to have native names. So when, when you have an, a language selection, uh, people will don't understand if it's all in German, or at least I won't. Uh, if all the language names are in German. Uh, so the names are easier to uh, understand. We have the writing direction knowledge built into Drupal 6. So it knows if you have right to left written language need, which needs to be written uh, in the other direction. Um, we have weights for languages. So if you have, if you have a listing of languages uh, anywhere in your site, you can put your uh, more important languages upper. Uh, and we have pass, prefix and subdomain setup and recognition for languages. Uh, maybe I can quickly show you how, how does this in interface looks in uh, no, 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 no. I'll have that on the screen. If it's raw, my mouse, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit bigger on mine. So yeah, yeah I might be better with mirroring on. What? Oh. <laughs> it's not better on my screen, but yeah, it might be better for you. So um, we have, well, I have a Drupal 6 install here. It has one or more problems, but I don't care. Uh, we have uh, we have a languages uh, item in this um, site configuration part, and we know a lot more about languages now. Uh, we know uh, uh, we know uh, the native names. We know whether it's written right or left or not. Um, we have a weight, and you can, uh, if you go to edit, you have more information, so you can specify stuff like, uh, like uh, recognize uh, or switch to this language if you have this prefix in the pa in the path. So if you visit node one, it will show you the default language. If you visit r, r slash node one, then it shows you the uh, Arabic version. Uh, and we also have language domain support, which means that you can have um, any kind of domain you can use for different languages. Uh, you can use subdomains if you want, or you can use your own, own uh, different top level uh, or, or your registration in the different top level domains for the languages. So it can, uh, it can uh, uh, work with these uh, options. Uh, it only works if all all these domains are uh, are uh, pointed in the or on this side. Okay. If you have a mother site is pointed on on a different code base, then then they uh, it will look uh, in that database and will look what language options you have there. So it uses uses those language options which you have on that uh, subsite of your multi site installation. Okay. Any? Uh, yep. Yep. Yes, we also uh, we also um, watch for the accept language stuff sent by the browser, and we recognize wha uh, whether, whether we have uh, any anything uh, which we can use from the browser. Uh, so how I how, how do I turn uh, mirroring off now? I'd love I'd love to see the icon here, but I don't have it. What was it? Combination key combination or something? You know? No. 
Yeah, and I saw yeah, I see some preferences I know. Uh, and there's no option for a, a heal. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's here. Great. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm I'm uh, I'm quite a recent Mac convert, so excuse me if if I'm if I'm a bit uh, if I've, I've, I have a few problems with the system. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, we have right to left themes. There's not an actual screenshot of the theme, but um, we have most of the themes converted in Drupal 6 to uh, to be able to do right to left support. Um, and it's possible to, to do it to any theme. We decided that we support um, uh, dash rti.css uh, suffix in the file names. So if you have CSS files in your system and Drupal finds um, right to left uh, versions of them, then it will use that. So it's very easy to, to make your sites right to left if you want to. Uh, we still miss push button and Garland and Minelli themes in core, but they are, uh, but the um, Arabic guys are working very hard on making it happen. They have uh, very few problems in Opera maybe with it, so so uh, it's looking quite nice. They they are running uh, Garland uh, on the Arabic community site, uh, so um, so it's it's going to happen very soon. Uh, yeah, uh, and now it's possible to have it with any of the contributed names. Uh, as I said, we have language detection. We, uh, uh, if we find something in the, this, uh, anyone uh, who's not a Watson I Ivory is, or Ivory, you don't know? Uh, it's an internationalized resource identifier. We had the uniform resource locator, then we had the uniform resource identifier, and now we have the internationalized resource identifier. That's the, that, that's, that's the latest stuff we should use. Uh, it means that you you can have uh, UTF-8 stuff anywhere in the URL. Uh, it's not possible with URIs, basically. Uh, yeah. So if you have a domain or a path which uh, which Drupal can recognize as uh, belonging to a specific language, then it will use that. If uh, a user preference is set for a specific user to use a language, then it is used. Uh, then we check for the browser stuff. So if if there's nothing in the past, if there's no user preference, and Drupal was set to detect, um, it's possible to turn it off if you don't want to detect the browser stuff. Then it will look at the browser, and if nothing else uh, works, then we fall back on the default. As I said, we also have uh, automated imports. Uh, we redefined the translation packaging format, which means that all contributed modules need to change their way how they have the translations. but as uh, I will um, uh, reach the end of my presentation, you will see that it will happen anyway. Um, so we have a friendly translation package format, which means that all modules have their translations <coughs> hosted in their own folder. They have a translation subdirectory, and all translations are there. It used to be that there was a PO subdirectory, which nobody knows what a PO is. Um, so we have the translations. And for Drupal core, it will also be broken up into smaller files to the different modules. So when you don't enable half of Drupal core, not, none of the translations will get imported. So it's much performant, it's much better. Um, we have a batch API in uh, Drupal 6, which means that we can have, um, have a lot of tasks uh, lined up and it runs it in different HTTP requests and you only see a progress bar. It goes and it's done. So when you install Drupal 6, you have a nice screen at the start which asks for you whether you want to have the translation localized or not. If you want to, it provides you with an explanation of how to download the package and, and put it um, into a Drupal directory and you click next. You, uh, you have a list of languages to choose from. Uh, and then at the end of uh, all the configuration of, of the Drupal installation, it has its progress by running is done and you are uh, you are getting to the front page of your Drupal and it's already translated into the language you wanted it to. Uh, and when uh, there's uh, this feature when you enable a module or you install a module or enable a theme, 
you get um, your transitions imported in all the languages. So imagine you have four languages and you are turning on five modules at once. That could be 20 transition files imported automatically. You don't need to upload them yourself. That's quite nice. Uh, Constantin was uh, instrumental in doing the translatable JavaScript. It was not possible to translate JavaScript before, so we mirrored the Drupal API to Drupal.t and Drupal.formatplur, which is available in JavaScript. So any JavaScript code is written for Drupal 6, uh, and using these two functions are uh, translatable. Uh, there is a small uh, preprocessor in Drupal which searches for these function calls in JavaScript and pulls uh, the stuff into the database. So even if you don't have a translation file for the JavaScript, it will show up in your database and you can translate it on the web interface. Uh, and uh, the extractor for Drupal 6 uh, will already include this one. Um, yeah, and there's already simple theming in JavaScript. There's a theme function in JavaScript. Uh, it was basically required for this to work because the placeholders uh, in format plur and in T require theming. So there's a, Java, uh, there's a very thin JavaScript theming layer, which is quite nice. Um, yep, I said we have a task groups API, which means that uh, uh, in Drupal 5, it was only possible to have, have the interface tracks trans interface text translated with this get text tool set. Now there are a lot of other stuff in Drupal 6 which you might would like to or you, you would like to translate with this tool set. Like if you have your taxonomy terms, those are, uh, those are little strings and or aggregated categories and profile fields. So uh, we have the possibility to translate this in Drupal 6, it's not built in. Uh, so it's, not, it's still not possible to translate these, I, I will uh, get to it, but we have a text uh, group system which allows you to not only translate the build interface, but have anything else translated and you, so basically you can use the get text uh, importing workflow for any stuff you would like to, but uh, you need to code that stuff for yourself because uh, the text groups inter, uh, API itself is not used for anything in, in Drupal except the default interface. So, yeah, we didn't have enough time for that. There was a lot of modifications. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, and we have the possibility also to have on-page interface translation, and I have a module for you which allows for it. Um, it means that uh, it can collect all the strings used on the page and translate it, um, and it's also useful for uh, for uh, optimizing your, uh, your strings use up. Maybe if I have time for demos in the end, I will show you that one. It looks nice already, but it can be much better still. Uh, we have content language support, which means that any content you uh, enter into Drupal 6 can have a language uh, associated, or it can be a language neutral content, like an image with no text or or something you don't know the language of and you don't want to know it. Um, so it can be either language neutral or can have any of the languages you have enabled on the site. Uh, this is configurable per content type, so if you have like uh, forums, they can have the default language associated and you don't have it translated to different languages or you're, you're not interested in having a, having a language uh, tag on them. It doesn't support content translation. That's a different functionality. It's also built into Drupal 6, but it's not there, so you can use just the content language stuff. It might be useful for personal blogs where you post your, your blog stuff. You sometimes post in your own language, you sometimes post in English, you sometimes post some el something else. Uh, so you can, you can set what language it is in, but you don't want to translate it. If you want to translate it, there's building content translation in Drupal 6, uh, which means that you can have different nodes, different posts, which are related as being in the same translation set. And uh, um, they basically need to be in different languages and the system tries to make sure that you don't have two uh, of the same languages and so on and so on. And there's a basic work workflow to signal whether your translation is outdated. So there's a notion of a uh, default language for content which, uh, which basically you enter first in the translation set. That's the default mode of the translation set. And every translation can be outdated if the uh, original node is 
modified, but of course uh, the real workflow module in Contrib can do anything with this stuff. Uh, they are basically nodes. Uh, and as I've said, we decided that we need different nodes for the different language stuff because you can have different permissions. You can have different images associated with them. You can have different comments. You can have uh, different counters on it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it has a lot of advantages. And the APA allows you to share different data between these uh, posts. So if you think of events, which you, maybe you have this fast kind of event, it has the same date, it has the same location, um, it has the same program, but you would like to have different descriptions in English and German. Um, so the system allows you to uh, share, share content between different nodes. It's not built into the core. It's part of the programming API. We expect CCK to make use of it. Uh, we cannot make sure that they will make use of it, but it's possible to do it. Um, yep. And we also have pro language aliases. So if you have something which, uh, which has the same URL in all languages, like the contact form, you have a slash contact. You can have it uh, alias to different languages with a different uh, string and it still works with uh, different prefixes. This is the example of home. Uh, this is in Hungarian and this is in uh, Spanish, I guess, probably. How's it? Uh, and we have still more stuff to talk about. We have lower level changes. Uh, Drupal 6 allows you to have multilingual requests. So, um, for example, when you are sending uh, 100 mails to different users in a request, like you have a newsletter, you would like to send out to all your users uh, and they have different languages, language preferences. So what was done before is that all was sent in the same language and in the language the request was initiated in. So if, um, if, you, were, if you were like a Lush Russian guy and you were in the interface and you press the send button, then every user got the Russian email because you see the Russian interface, so they get the Russian email. Uh, if the cron was running, then everybody was getting the default language because cron was running the default language. Now we have modeling where request handling. So, so when you send an email, you can specify, uh, the programmer specifies what language should in that email be in. So every user gets emails in their um, own languages. And log messages are were no different. Uh, they were always logged in the language the page was in. So if you have four languages on the site, you had a mixture of log messages in four languages. So if you didn't know all the four languages and some log messages you didn't understand. Now the log messages are stored in English and they are localized on demand when you view your logs. So it's localized into the language. Um, you are viewing the page in and there's still more to, s to talk about. Um, there's some hardcore stuff for uh, guys mostly who'd like to uh, use Drupal in English but would like to translate some stuff or modify some stuff in the English interface, it's now possible to have, uh, have a string array in the settings PHP file of the site and override a few number of strings for your site. It means that you don't need to have lock here module installed, you don't need to use its cache, you don't need to use anything. If you just need to modify a few num uh, very small number of strings, it's very efficient. If you need to modify a hundred or a thousand, I wouldn't suggest this, but if you need to modify a few of them, then it could be uh, quite nice. But, <laughs> here comes the but. <laughs> Still no way to translate your site settings, your categories, your vocabularies, your user-defined menus, your aggregated categories, your profile field titles, your category names, your content type properties, your user note stuff, your uh, anything. So most of the stuff, uh, apart from nodes, that's user uh, provided. It's by default, by Drupal 6 built in, not translatable. Uh, you've seen we have, a, we, have a, we have a lot of stuff done, but we need to leave something for Drupal 7. Because otherwise you won't upgrade. So this is left for Drupal 7. Uh, we expect um, uh, I-89 and localizer or and or localizer module to update and do all this stuff for you. Uh, I don't know whether, uh, when it will happen. I know it will surely will happen with, uh, with the internationalization module um, because the development basically sponsors that it should happen. So they are using it for clients. 
So it will happen. Uh, I don't know how localization is go localizer's going. Uh, the maintainer is not really uh, communicative through our development process, so I don't know yet. Um, and there will be a, uh, and there could be um, a lot of uh, contributing modules um, using these enha enhancements better uh, to have better performance, to have better localization, and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I have talked about a lot of Drupal 6 stuff, but honestly, I only touched a very small portion of what's new in Drupal 6. Uh, these were the language stuff. Uh, this is a complete list of what's for you in Drupal 6. And the language stuff, but at other uh, areas, it's huge. So you, you need to try it out. You need to, um, you need to check how it works. Uh, I hope we will have a beta really soon. I'm not sure it will be, but I hope to have it soon. What was that? Ten. Minutes. Ten. Okay. Um, and what uh, thi this was for Drupal six, but uh, what Robert said is that I was also working uh, this summer uh, for a Google Summer of Code project, so I worked uh, on more tools uh, stuff. Um, I built the localization server which I will show you in a few minutes maybe. Um, uh, what I've said before is that translation is quite cumbersome. We have the text and the source code. Uh, it needs to be extracted. It needs to be committed into CVS. Uh, translators need to know CVS. They need to have a tool to translate to get text files. They need to commit it back to CVS. They need to manage all the releases. So when a project has a new release, they need to manage to get the translations for the release because if they are not making the translation by the time it's released, it's not possible to have the translation in the release uh, anymore because re because release toolbars are, are are frozen basically. When it's released, it's it's not, it's not possible to modify. Um, so translations are not getting in. Um, so they need to know CVS. They need to know the get text tools. They need to know the release stuff. They need to uh, fiddle with project nodes. They need to manage the releases. Uh, they need to build a team. They need to collaborate. And there are no good tools for this yet. Some translation teams use case tracker. Some use project module themselves on their own site setup. Uh, so it's quite scattered. Some are not coordinating at all. Uh, we, are anarchic, we are anarchic system in the Hungarian translation team. I say the final word. So um, we have, yeah. Like we translated themes to makeup in Hungarian. And they were like, it's, it's quite a feminist translation for the stuff. That we were. So, so maybe. Anyway, uh, that's how it works. Uh, so we thought that, that we need a better translation support tool. And we built uh, this localization server um, for people. And I'm, I'm just going to do the remaining slides and i show you what you are interested in more. Um, so I said you should try Drupal 6. It's not a beta release yet, but there's a development snap there's an idea development snapshot at that address. Um, and make sure to report all the bugs you find. There are bugs in Drupal 6 still uh, there. And I hope we have a beta really soon. We are progressing quite well. We made a, made quite a, a bit of progress uh, at this conference. So I hope we have a release quite soon. I'm not sure. Uh, if we're interested in the finer details of how others do this, why we do this this way in Drupal 6. I have my thesis uh, uploaded up there, and Dries already has it on his blog. It has a summary of all the problems, the different cultural issues, um, plural stuff, um, how's replacement going, um, and stuff like that, how these systems do it, uh, what, what I plan for Drupal 6. And although it actually not ended up exactly like that, it ended up a lot similar to that, what I planned. Uh, and I should mention that uh, this work was, uh, my thesis work was sponsored by Development Seed. And I got this great t-shirt from them too for that. So uh, they were great supporters. They were paying uh, Jose uh, to work on this uh, in, in company time, on company time. So, so they are great for the internationalization stuff. And Google Summer of Code sponsored my localization server work. Uh, so uh, basically I, I um, I had uh, quite a lot of support uh, for my stuff. Uh, thanks for watching. What are you interested in for more of this stuff? Everything? Nothing. What are you interested in for more of this
Thank you. If you are interested in anything, I can still I still have uh, three or four minutes to demo something for you. If not, then feel free to go to the next session. Thank you. Translation server. Okay. Uh, um, studies to maybe that works better. Ah, better. Not that good, but better. Uh, ah, great. So basically, it works that every every uh, translation group uh, has his own uh, organic group. Like uh, if I log in there. There's the translation themes. We actually have that many uh, languages already for Drupal, so it's quite uh, it's quite a bit of a work uh, for for handling all that. So every 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 group has its own uh, organic group. They have like uh, they could have like dictionaries here or discussions, and. Uh, for every group, uh, we have an overview of uh, all the projects running. Uh, I have this demo site for Drupal e-commerce and organic groups, but this will have the thousands of projects running on Drupal.org. Um, and they have a translation uh, status indicator. Uh, you can go into the translation interface. Now I'm a uh, I'm member of this group, so I can go and translate stuff here. Uh, maybe I'm doing something easy here. Uh, that's a Hungarian. It's quite a Hungarian. I'm not putting the replacement there. It's not. Okay, okay. Let's be strict about it. You mean? Okay, so I copy this there to make it quickly. And there we go. So I save the translation. I can save. I can uh, I save all the page actually it says that I should edit and it's actually there. Uh, I can show the translation field if I want to. I can copy either the translation or the original stuff there. I can see where it's used actually. It was translated by me at this time. It was used in Drupal 4.7.7 one time um, there. Uh, if I have some more complex stuff like which is used elsewhere, like let's filter for uh, la, la, la. delete. Let's see. Yeah, that's used by by these modules quite a few places. Um, it tries to help you with these uh, with these replacement strings, uh, and it tr even tries to help you if you have some some very uh, long stuff to wh when you have uh, when you have an email formatted, it's quite easy to break it if you are not ready for. That stuff. It's a. I'm not a good searcher, but anyway, uh, what I like to show is that it shows where it has the new lines. So when an email is formatted, it's quite important to have it look like uh, similar in different languages. Um, then we have these uh, filters there. We can filter for untranslated stuff, suggested or translated. We can filter for all the releases. We can filter by release and we can search for a specific string and it then restricts uh, the shown stuff to only those strings where it's shown. And there are two nice functions, one import, which imports a translation uh, file, and an export, which basically generates, uh, which basically generates a nice uh, torball, which is in the format uh, where Drupal 6 expects it. So let's say I'm exporting uh, uh, organic groups. Export. So I can export transition template if I want to, to translate in an external tool, uh, or I can filter for a specific release and export a translation. And I get a torball, which I can download here and check what's in there. Uh, where, wait, oh, uh, where did they get? 
shouldn't it it should have been a yeah so it's in a format um, expected by the system it has a translation subfolder and it has all the files uh, in the translation subfolder so if you extract this structure into the org then you have a translation subdirectory there and all the files there which are importable and these contain the uh, translations to Hungarian already. So that's, uh, that's how it works now. Um, it provides a collaboration interface through organic groups. It provides an input and export functionality and it shares the translations. So uh, you can see that this, this um, Hungarian status I reached uh, was only uh, one uh, file to import and it spans, uh, it spans to different projects because they use the same strings. So it gets a lot easier to translate the other contributing modules then. And even if I'm not authorized to, uh, to um, translate here, I can still uh, review or export stuff for myself if I'd want to. Uh, so I can still go there and review what's available there uh, that's how it's, that's how it looks. That's what I, that's what I, uh, entered now. So that's how it works now. It's going to, uh, it's very tightly integrated into Drupal org project management infrastructure. So it automatically knows about all the projects run there, all the releases of all the projects run there. It downloads the tarballs, it extracts the translatable strings. So it knows, ev ev so it knows what's translatable in all releases of all projects on Drupal org. It takes a huge amount of time to extract all the stuff, but it kind of works. Um, there's, there's basically no other way to, um, to do it. We need to run through all the stuff uh, once and then, it, then the incremental updates will be a lot faster. Then there's just a small uh, test site I have locally installed here. And you might be interested in the uh, uh, localization client, Are you, aren't you? That's uh, currently this little stuff at the bottom of your page. I'm now, I'm now uh, in, the, in a Hungarian interface, although it shows English because I don't have anything imported. Uh, and I can translate anything that's uh, shown on this page to Hungarian. I'll uh, let it be correct in case some Hungarian guys are watching this video there. Uh, so I have it translated uh, and, and then I can go through and translate what's uh, in the page. It's much easier to do than going into the local interface, searching for the stuff, what I've seen not translated somewhere and then finding it out how to translate and submitting it and then going back to the page and rechecking whether it's translated or not. There's a translation client. There's a plan to integrate it with the server uh, to share. So when you enter the transition there, it goes up and it shares with the community. It's a very easy modification. I'm, I've not yet done it. I'm concentrating on getting Drupal 6 out and uh, and, I, and we are getting uh, help from development seat for, for, for getting these interfaces better. Even, even I, well, it, it needs some uh, user interface uh, guy looking at it. So uh, it's going to be even better than this. That's it. Thank you. If you've got a website, you need a system to manage your content through. If you want to build a web application, you've got to download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. If you've got a website, you need a system to manage your content Drupal. If you want to build a web application, you've got to download Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal. Drupal, 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 Drupal.